Death Row, a letter from Tony Alamo to a prisoner on death row, volume 15000. It has come to my attention that you are now on death row, and I am hoping that my letter will reach you before your possible execution is carried out. It is an inbred fault for people to try to shift the guilt of every sin that they've committed to blame it on Satan, somebody, some circumstance that happened in their life, or God. It makes us feel more comfortable to switch the blame on somebody else or a circumstance. Satan, someone, a circumstance, has no power to make you sin, and God never tempts or makes anyone sin. The power that Satan has is only to tempt and deceive. Satan couldn't make Eve touch and eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. After she was tempted and deceived, she took, she ate. She's the one that sinned. Everyone gets tempted by Satan, and he tries to deceive everyone. But God gave us a free will to choose to be deceived by Satan or to receive the truth of God's word. God's word says if we sin, we go to hell. There's only one way and one person in the universe that has the power and is willing to remove that sin off our soul if we ask, and that's Jesus through the blood that he shed at Calvary. No matter what we feel caused us to sin, we're the ones that sinned and will have to stand in God's judgment for that sin. So it only makes good sense that if Jesus can and will remove the sin if we ask, then we must ask him to and let him before we die. We must admit that we are the sinner. Sin causes our soul to go to hell and keeps our soul from going to heaven. The soul's temporary abode is our body that eventually must die. When the body dies, the soul goes to either heaven or hell. The soul must be forgiven of all sin before the body dies or is killed. If not, the soul cannot enter heaven, but surely will go to hell. This is God's truthful word. The world hates and twists the truth of God's word. God said that the whole world would be deceived just before he returns to this world, and that is the condition of the world at this moment. God said the only way to avoid deception is to read receive and do the Word of God, the Bible, without argument. The Word of God is the King James Version of the Bible. Satan's deception powers have become more sophisticated today. In these last days, Satan has reversed his evil strategies in order to maximize his deception. This is done by the printing of untruthful, twisted versions of different Bibles. The King James Version is the only true, safe version of the Bible to read. The other versions are filled with deceptions. The Bible tells us that to be deceived is to be demon-possessed, whether it be knowingly or unwittingly. If we're following Satan by deception, we are still following Satan. To be one of God's precious possessions, One must be washed from all sin by faith in the cleansing blood that was shed by Jesus on the cross. Our original mother and father were Eve and Adam, and because Eve and Adam believed Satan instead of God, they sinned and were dispossessed by God and became possessions of Satan. This means that we all have the sin that Adam and Eve sinned on our soul, and this sin, along with all the other sins that we have committed, has to be removed before we die if we want to be repossessed by God and dispossessed from the devil and go to heaven instead of hell's flames forever. God is merciful. He gives us another chance. The only way he could do this was to come and die and go to hell instead of us because the law of God said somebody has to pay for the sin. The only way we could pay is to die and suffer hell's flames and many other torments. God said, I'll send my son to suffer, be rejected, die and go to hell's many torments instead of you and me. If you receive all these truths to be fact and repent of all your sins, then commit your entire life over to God through his son Christ Jesus by faith in all his words, the Bible, you won't have to go to hell. Jesus died and went to hell for you, me, and whomever in the world that will receive him. 
But because he had never sinned, the Holy Spirit raised him from out of hell and brought him back to life, to where he walked out of that chilly tomb and showed himself alive forevermore. And he ascended to the kingdom of heaven while a crowd of over 500 people watched in amazement. At this very moment, Jesus sits at the right hand of God, where he waits to hear people's voices calling on the Father for forgiveness of sins through the blood that Jesus shed for you and me. He wants to hear you say, My Lord and my God, have mercy upon my soul, a sinner. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God. I believe that he died on the cross and shed his precious blood for the forgiveness of all my former sins. I believe that God raised Jesus from the dead by the power of the Holy Spirit and that he sits on the right hand of God at this moment, hearing my confession of sin and this prayer. I open up the door of my heart and I invite you into my heart, Lord Jesus. Wash all of my filthy sins away in the precious blood that you shed in my place on the cross at Calvary. You will not turn me away, Lord Jesus. You will forgive my sins and save my soul. I know because your word, the Bible, says so. Your word says that you will turn no one away, and that includes me. Therefore I know that you have heard me, and I know that you have answered me, and I know that I am saved. And I thank you, Lord Jesus, for saving my soul. And I will show my thankfulness by doing as you command and sin no more.